Hi guys, my name is Roman. This is Dovidas. Sveiki. Today we are again at this A320 simulator at BA Training Aviation Academy. And uh, we are going to talk today about uh, some Airbus systems. And uh, today we will uh, try to explain to you uh, Airbus flight controls, flight control laws and flight controls protections at different stages of flight. First of all, I would like to make some citation from Airbus FCOM. The Airbus fly-by-wire system is designed for the new generation of airplanes to make it pleasant and safe and cost-effective to fly on it. So, I basically agree with this statement and later on you will understand why. Uh, let's take a look what we have outside the airplane. We have, uh, for pitch control, we have uh, elevators, left elevator and right elevator, and uh, trim trimmable horizontal stabilizer. On the wings, we have ailerons, which we control with the side stick, and uh, sp spoilers, which work as a lift damping device, as a speed brakes, and as a roll spoilers. We also have a conventional rudder here, which we control with the pedals. Here is it. And that's basically it. All these flight control surfaces are hydraulically actuated and electrically controlled. And moreover, trimmable horizontal stabilizer and rudder are mechanically controlled as well as a backup. So it means if we lose all hydraulics in Airbus, we will not have any control on any surface. But fortunately, it's quite improbable. Next, let's take a look what we have inside the cockpit. So let's start with the lateral console. Each pilot have a side stick, which is not interconnected. So uh, basically, if me and Dovidas move side stick at the same time, their inputs will be just algebraically added and the airplane will send a request to flight controls which corresponds to, to the sum of inputs on both side sticks. And if we move both side sticks at the same time, we will hear some oral alert in the cockpit. Let's try this. So, Douglas, please move the side stick full left. Full, yeah, full left. Full I will left. move the side stick full forward. Do the input. You see, the airplane tells us that we are moving two side sticks at the same time. In Do this, the input. In this case, Davidus made left input, I made right Do input. input. This is why the ailerons are centered. We don't get any lateral input for Do the airplane. In case of pitch, Davidus side stick is neutral, mine is full forward. This is why we have full forward deflection of elevators. Okay, release it. What else we have? We have rudder pedals, which work on any conventional airplane, like Cessna, Teknon, Boeing, anything. We have a trimmable horizontal stabilizer wheel for captain and for first officer. Unlike side sticks, they are connected to each other. So if I move one wheel, another is moving. Also in the cockpit, we have a speed brakes lever, which is moved like this. So if we move it back, our spoilers will be fully extended. If we move it forward, they will be fully retracted. Just wait a second. Like this. If we move it up, the ground spoilers will be armed. So if we move it up, they don't extend now, but they will extend in case of rejected takeoff or after landing. We have a flaps lever in the cockpit as well. So it has just four positions unlike other airplanes. It's flaps zero, which corresponds to flaps retracted and slats retracted. Flaps one, which extend flaps, flaps and slats. And flaps two, three, and flaps full, which we normally use for landing. I will set the flaps one now, as we are going to take off soon. So it will be left like this for now. The last control that I would like to explain to you is rudder trim. If the autopilot is active, it sets rudder trim automatically. Before takeoff, we should set it to zero, like it is set now. We are controlling it by twisting this knob right 
or left. If we trim it to the right, we will have some number here, which corresponds to deviation. Maximum is 20 degrees left or right, which is stated here on the panel of the rudder trim. If we need to set it to zero, we don't have to twist it again to the left or to the right. We have a reset push button here. That's it about controls inside the airplane. Okay, in Airbus, flight controls are working accordingly to some flight control laws. There is normal law and some reconfiguration laws. Uh, during normal operations, it's obvious that we use normal law. This law is, divi uh, is divided into some modes, which are ground mode, flight mode, and flare mode. Uh, ground mode, it's obvious from the name, is used on the ground. So, if we move any flight control on the ground, we will have just direct relationship between side stick and the flight control surface. So, if I pull side stick full up, it will just go full up without any delay. Full down, full down. About ailerons, it is the same. The next mode to which aircraft switches after ground mode, after liftoff, is uh, flight mode. In flight mode, we don't have any more direct relationship between side stick and flight controls. Uh, the airplane in pitch just follows uh, G-force demand, which means aircraft is interpreting what we input into side stick, it turns it into G demand, like with which acceleration we want to go up and sends uh, corresponding input to elevators. For the roll in flight, uh, the airplane uh, is uh, sensing so-called roll rate demand. When side stick is centered, the roll demand is zero, so airplane is not rolling left or right. If side stick is deflected full right or full left, the roll demand will be 15 degrees per second. So if we set side stick full to the right in flight, the airplane will start to roll to the right with a rate of 15 degrees per second. About yaw in the flight mode, uh, the flight augmentation computers are uh, doing damping functions and uh, automatic uh, turn coordination. So pilots don't have to make any input on the rudder to coordinate turns. The other interesting thing that after takeoff, the automatic trimmable horizontal stabilizer comes in. It means that pilots don't have to trim the airplane manually. For any speed or any configuration change, the, uh, the airplane will trim automatically by itself. So we just may leave the side stick at neutral, change configuration, and uh, the airplane will just continue on the straight flight path. Let's see for now how it works in practice. Dovidas will fly the airplane. I will just talk to you a bit and describe what's happening. Let's fly. Okay, parking brake off. Check. You ready? Yep. Take off. Check. Set toga. Read FMA. Uh, man toga a serious runway out of frost blue. Check. Thrust set. So. 100 knots, we are accelerating now, Check. we are still in uh, ground mode, when we lift off we will transition to flight mode, V1, rotate, positive climb, you're up, you're up, Runway follow trip. flight directors, so now we are in flight mode, so airplane uh, will follow the G demand when we pull or push side stick, and roll rate demand when we set side stick right or left. Speaking this in easy way, if we just leave the side stick, airplane will continue flying with 1G, which corresponds just continuing the flight path which we set before. Okay, set lever to climb. Climb. 
check and I will just set speed to 50 for you. And you may just fly visually without flight directors. Uh, and pitch down a little bit just to accelerate above S speed. Flaps. Stand by. I will set the flaps. Okay. Flap zero now. Yeah. Again, we are now in flight mode. If we release side stick, the airplane will just continue straight ahead as we left it. So show your hands, Dovidas. Yeah. We are not controlling airplane now. It's flying as we left it. The thrust is changing. We can change configuration now. The airplane will just continue to fly with 1G, which corresponds just straight ahead. If we want to roll, it will uh, turn with the roll rate demand, which we set with a side stick. With the maximum deflection corresponds to 15 degrees per second. What else is interesting about the flight controls is that we have some flight controls protections in normal flight mode. Uh, these flight controls protections include pitch protection, like maximum pitch is 30 degrees, minimum pitch is 15 degrees. G-load protection, which does not let us break the airplane. If uh, we pull, we cannot exceed 2.5 G for clean configuration and we cannot go down uh, minus 1 G. The other protections are high angle of attack, which doesn't let us stall the airplane, and uh, high speed protection, which will not let us to accelerate above the speed that will break our airplane's wings. Now we will try to show you these protections in action. So, firstly we will describe uh, pitch protections. So, Dovidas, you are an aerobatic pilot. Just try to make a vertical climb with the airplane. Okay. And let's see how it uh, will handle it. So, pitch is increasing now. But it cannot increase above 30 degrees. We're not Just vertical. Yes, we cannot go vertical in normal flight mode. Just continue like this for now. And let's climb to a bit higher altitude to show the uh, negative limit of pitch. Okay. We are now coming to the limit of one more protection, which is angle of attack protection. Angle of attack protection will try to keep the maximum angle of attack if we pull the side stick full up. The maximum angle of attack speed is the boundary between red and amber black fence. So just try to pull it full, fully aft. It's full aft now. Yeah, so the airplane will not let us to get yep. into stall. If you release side stick... Release it. The airplane will gradually accelerate to the so-called V-alpha protection. This is not maximum alpha, maximum angle of attack, but it is close to it and uh, it corresponds to the limit between that amber black fence and this amber line. You see, airplane is accelerating slowly to this speed without any command from us. So once again, if we pull, the airplane will pitch up up to maximum angle of attack. Thereafter, it will pitch down not to let us stall the airplane. If we remove any force on side stick, airplane will accelerate to V-alpha protection. So, okay, we are quite high a bit. We can uh, show the negative pitch protection. I will set thrust levers to idle. Just pitch down now. Okay. Down, yeah. Not so fast. Yep. And... Uh, You see, airplane does not let you to go below 15 degrees. Let's see what happens when airplane accelerates to maximum speed. We may even add a little bit power. Now yeah, look, the ground is coming. Yeah. So re release side stick now. Both release, both. release, release. So when airplane comes into overspeed, it shows us that our speed is too high and it starts to pitch up automatically just to 
remove any threat of uh, breaking the airplane because of high speed. And we cannot cancel this warning with uh, master warning push button. So let's just wait and see what happens with the airplane. Speed is dropping slowly. I will just set idle thrust. Speed is dropping. And when airplane leaves uh, protection range, airplane just continues to go down as it was before, but not letting uh, to accelerate again to the speed above VMO. Okay, you may uh, just pitch to keep the altitude. Now we can see the G load protection. The G load is shown here when it's excessive. So I will set toga thrust now. Just pitch to neutral. Not to climb, not to descend. Okay. We are accelerating. When the speed will be 340 knots, just full side stick. Okay. In three seconds to pull up. Okay. And uh, we will look at the G load here. Okay, you may pull now. G load 2.5, not more. Airplane does not let us to break it down. Now push down. Push down. Let's see. Yep, it didn't even show as a dangerous G load. Yep, it's here. We didn't even go to negative side. But in the worst case, the airplane will not let us to push it below. Yeah, again, high speed protection in force. Just pitch up. And continuous flying level flight. Okay. Okay, that's it about the pitch in normal law. Let's discuss now what happens with the roll. As I have already said, the roll is controlled by roll rate demand. It means that it will be, when we move side stick, the roll rate will be somewhere between 0 degrees per second up to 15 degrees per second with the full side stick deflection. So now Doidas is turning left. When his side stick is neutral, the airplane just retains the bank angle. But if Doidas sets bank angle more than 33 degrees, and release a side stick, the airplane will just bank back to the 33 degrees. Show it. Release. Hands are released now. The airplane is going back to 33 degrees. Here it is. Maximum bank angle for the airplane in normal law is 67 degrees, which corresponds to 2.5 G. This is made so not to let us just flip it over in some marginal conditions. Show the maximum bank angle, please. The bank angle now is 67 degrees. The airplane doesn't let us to make it more. Okay, set it to neutral. Just fly on this heading. So basically, we are almost finished discussing normal law and its flight mode. And while we are going back to our departure airfield, we may discuss some reconfiguration laws. Reconfiguration laws are used in Airbus just to, uh, to control the airplane in case of some failures related to flight controls, which do not permit the airplane to operate in normal law. We have a special table in FCOM which showed us uh, which failures will cause the airplane to change from one flight control mode or one flight control law to another. So, for example, we are in pitch normal, roll normal and yaw normal law. If we have double ADR failure, second not self-detected, we will have alternate law, no protections in pitch, direct law in roll and alternate law in yaw. So what it means alternate law with or without protections? Essentially, our 
flight controls become uh, just connected to the side stick. But in alternate law with protections, we still have G-load protection and so-called high-speed stability and low-speed stability. If we are in alternate law with protections and uh, we have uh, high stability, high-speed stability, when approaching the VMO, the aircraft will just send a slight pitch down input, which pilot can overcome, unlike in normal law. So if we are accelerating too much, the airplane will just show us that, come on, it's time to fly up, I want to stop. But we can overcome it and just continue to accelerate if we need. The very same situation happens with uh, low speed stability. If airplane uh, decelerates too much and, and uh, close to whistle warning, uh, the airplane will send us a slight nose down demand, which we again can overcome. So it is possible to stall the airplane in alternate law, even with protections. And one more protection, which we have basically in all flight control laws, except mechanical backup, is G-load protection, which is very same as in normal law. Flight control alternate law without protections is the same as alternate law with protections, but without high speed stability and low speed stability. We have only high G-load protection. Direct law is basically how its name says, just connects directly our side stick and flight controls, like on any conventional airplane. You can ask, so what's the problem flying the airplane in direct law? The problem is we don't feel any pressure on side stick. So it's very, very easy to overstress the airplane. If we set side stick full aft in uh, direct law, we will not feel any pressure which can stop us. So the airplane can easily exceed G-load limit. Let's try the alternate law on practice. To do this, I will just switch off some flat computers. And the airplane shows us that we are in alternate law with protections laws. So, in this case, our pitch is uh, still quite similar to normal law. So, just my controls for a second. It is still G demand but we don't have protections. So if we start to descend, look at the PFD. We don't have any protection here. So we can easily pitch down below 15 degrees. Here is pitch 20 already. So we are coming straight to the ground. I will just go back. The same thing is with uh, high speed, uh, uh, I mean high pitch protections. We can pitch up to any degree we want, or the airplane can pitch. A roll in uh, alternate law is always the same as in direct law. So our ailerons are controlled uh, totally directly to the side stick deflection. In, in case of roll, our roll surfaces deflect perfectly the same as we deflect side stick. In alternate yaw mode, we don't have automatic turn coordination. We have only damping function, which protects us from Dutch roll. We can take a look at the status display, which shows us tips uh, for uh, flying in uh, alternate law. And you can see here, when landing gear down, direct law. So just to discuss the direct law, we will put the landing gear down. For the direct law, all our flight control surfaces, as we already discussed, are in direct relation with a side stick. We don't have automatic pitch stream anymore. On the PFD, airplane tells us, use manual pitch stream. So now I have always to put some pressure on my side stick or trim the airplane to maintain the level flight. If we take a look at flight controls page, if I pitch up with my side stick, the flight control surfaces just move up in direct relation. Pitch down, the same. 
So for now, I will just set everything back, like airplane is flying normally. We are back in normal low now. So I again cannot overcome speed, cannot overcome uh, high angle of attack, cannot overcome anything. All the protections are active. So this is it about uh, reconfiguration laws. Alternate law with or without protections and uh, direct law. The other mode, I mean the other law, which is quite interesting for us, is mechanical backup. Mechanical backup we use when we temporarily uh, don't have any connection to primary fly surfaces. With mechanical backup we can control only trimmable horizontal stabilizer and our rudder. This flight control law is not designed for a normal flight, for uh, any flight operation. This is used only for temporary operations. For example, when the aircraft is switching to emergency electrical config, the airplane is not designed even to land with this uh, flight control law. We can just uh, try to turn with, uh, without side stick. So to do this, we will just set a bit of right rudder and maybe trim the airplane a bit up. So airplane starts to turn, but it's doing this with the side slip. So just once again, this flight control law is not designed uh, to control the airplane for a prolonged time. This is just for transitions uh, in some very abnormal operations. So now we came to Brussels, we are over our departure airfield, and now Dovidas will try to land the airplane in normal law, and I will try to describe you how flare mode of normal law works. Okay, your controls, you may just fly heading uh, 150 for now, so turn right. I will set the tr uh, track index 150 for you, and start to descend. Not too much. Watch at your speed. Thrust will go to idle and just keep the speed trend at zero. Okay. Yeah, you just uh, overshoot the heading. Level of oh, now. Sorry. Yep, and continue descent. Just uh, fly straight ahead. We can use some speed brakes just to assist. Okay, start turning left with the bank approximately 20 degrees. Like this, okay? Yep. That's good. And turn uh, to the runway track via the left side. Descend to 2,000 feet now. Okay. You will do the visual approach as we did before. Okay, reduce your vertical speed so we can uh, put a little bit of flaps. Just uh, like 1,000 feet per minute. Okay, let's go for flaps one and continue with this rate. And uh, basically you may look at your PFD, so you see where is the final approach track. Okay. And uh, just try to join it. And descend to altitude, 2000 feet. Fly straight ahead a bit. Ten seconds. 
Thousand. Checked. Checked. I just set the ILS just to make it comfortable for you. Thank you. Okay, I will remove the spoilers. We may go for flaps too. Flaps to the speed checked. Flaps too. When we will be 2.5 nautical miles left of track, ask for gear down. Uh, this number. Okay. okay. Gear down. Gear down. Don't climb. You may start turning left gently. So while Dovidas is turning to the final approach course, I will just describe you what is flare mode, which are we going to show you. Flare mode is part of the normal flight control law, uh, the same as uh, ground mode or flight mode. During flare mode, uh, first of all, airplane changes to flare mode when it passes 50 feet radial altimeter. At this moment, basically, side stick becomes in almost direct relationship uh, between uh, with the uh, elevators. At 30 feet radial altimeter, the airplane starts to send the nose down demand. Uh, we to reach minus two degrees pitch within eight seconds. So the pilot has to overcome it, but by, with a slight uh, back pressure on side stick. This makes flare on this airplane very, very conventional. So when you are approaching the ground, airplane will tend to lower the nose and you will have to pull. This makes landing very, very easy. So let's see. Okay, good, you are on the localizer. Yep, so now just turn to the runway track, align the track index with the bird. If you prefer to fly totally visually, I can switch up for you. Uh, I'll continue visually. Okay. Continue. Start to descend now a bit, like 700 feet per minute. Okay, let's go for flaps 3. Flaps 3. Speed checked. Flaps 3. I see you are a bit left. It's better to make all corrections when you are still high. And let's go for flaps full. Flaps full. Speed check. Flaps full. You see, you almost checked. You almost don't need to make any input to the side stick. The airplane just follows the flight path stability. You are a, bit, a little bit high. The automatic pitch trim is still working. It will stop working after 50 feet. Going slightly down, pitch up. Yep. On the bricks. One 
hundred. Fifty. Fifty feet? Forty. Thirty. Twenty. Retard. Five. Very nice. No, 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 no. Okay. Ground spoilers. Reverse. Yep. Reverse green. Diesel. Seventy knots. I'll leave it like this. Leave it. Yep, and brake. Manual braking. Check. And now stall the reverses. Yep. Set the parking brake. Parking brake set. So what we had on the flare? It all went quite fast, but I will try to explain it. At 50 feet, the automatic trim stopped working. It, just, it was just frozen in position and uh, at 50 feet the flare mode became active so the side stick was uh, essentially in direct relationship uh, with uh, flight controls and at 30 feet airplane sent the nose down demand to flight controls so Dovidas needed to pull the airplane not to let it just to dive into the runway so uh, that feels very conventional you do very same flare on Cessna, on Technam, on Boeing, on any airplane. When we touched the ground, ground spoilers opened and the airplane flight control loss turned into ground mode, which we discussed before. Now all the flight control surfaces are in direct relation with the side stick position. Okay, that's it for now. We tried to explain most of things. Of course, uh, it's almost impossible to describe all the Airbus logic, but if you have some questions, you may put them in comments, we will answer it. Thank you.